All right, y'all, we got a controversial point here. Controversial point from James Carville. For those of you who don't know, James Carville is the guy who basically got Bill Clinton elected. He was sort of like the pioneer of the triangulation strategy, which is just a fancy way of saying, uh, we're Democrats, but we're not like the lefty Democrats, bro. We're above the fray. We're like centrist Democrats. We agree with Democrats sometimes and Republicans sometimes. Like, pff, that's who we are, bro. We're smarter than that. Like, he came up with that strategy. And he's been in uh, elite Democratic circles for a long time. But he just pissed quite a few people off with this one. So here's what they say in media. James Carville sounds off on Dems in Wild New York Times column saying party's culture is being dominated by, quote, too many preachy females. Too many preachy females. Okay, let's get into the specifics and break it down. James Carville, the Democratic political strategist who led Bill Clinton to victory in the 1990s, claimed too many preachy females in the party may be to blame for turning voters off to Joe Biden. Carville spoke with Maureen Dowd for an opinion piece in the New York Times. James Carville, the Cajun who can't stop raging. A suspicion of mine is that there are too many preachy females dominating the culture of the Democratic Party, Carville told Dowd. Don't drink beer. Don't watch football. Don't eat hamburgers. This is not good for you. The message is too feminine. Everything you're doing is destroying the planet. You've got to eat your peas. All right, so let me pause to point this out. If there was a message coming from the Democratic Party, don't drink beer, don't watch football, don't eat hamburgers, this is not good for you, um, then that would be bad. But I think he just made that up. I've never heard that message come. Look, I'm no fan of the establishment Democrats. In fact, I'm one of their biggest enemies. They don't say this. <laughs> Who says this? Nobody says this. All right, let's let him continue to make his point to see if he can sharpen it. Maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but so far, I don't, I don't see it. This isn't something the Democrats are running on. This isn't something the Democrats are saying. Uh, even the idea that there are too many preachy females. Which females and what decisions are they making? Who are you referring to? Tell me what you're actually saying. Okay, quote, if you listen to Democratic elites, NPR is my go-to place for that. The whole talk is about how women and women of color are going to decide this election. I'm like, well, 40% of the people that vote are males. Do you mind if they have some consideration? I don't think the Democratic Party is hostile to men. I don't see that. I don't see that at all. Is he saying that when on NPR they're doing a segment about how, you know, women of color are an important voting block, is it not okay to discuss how women of color are an important voting block? Because look, from where I'm sitting, from my perspective, the general understood approach here is that the most important states are in the Rust Belt. Those are the most important states for this election. Those are the swing states where it's all going to come down to. And I don't know, a lot of people seem to care about all the kinds of voters that are there, right? Even, like, Joe Biden is arming and funding Netanyahu as he does an ethnic cleansing and a genocide in Gaza, but he's still at least trying to put on a show now to say to the Muslim voters in Michigan, like, hey, no, I'm with you, please vote for me, right? So basically, anybody who's in those swing states gets some sort of consideration, even if it's just kabuki theater PR type consideration. The idea that it's like, I... I Joe Biden is the oldest, least woke man on the planet. The idea, he's like, I don't know, Jack, I don't like these men. Let's try to not pitch it to them. Like, I just don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he means. Carville has long spoken out against liberal elites who enjoy feeling superior to conservatives. You are the liberal elite, James Carville. <laughs> like, you are the ultimate liberal elite. Carville has been sounding an alarm about progressives getting too censorious since he advised Hillary Clinton in 2016. He disparaged liberals' snooty, elitist faculty lounge attitudes long before he blew off the faculty lounge himself. He complained that woke stuff is killing us. That the left was talking in a language that ordinary Americans did not understand, using terms like Latinx and communities of color, and with a tone many Americans found sneering, as in Hillary's infamous phrase, basket of deplorables. Okay, so here's the thing. He's right vis-a-vis -vis Hillary. And Hillary lost. This stuff is not happening as much under Biden. It's just not. In fact, somebody highlighted the other day, back when he was running the first time or something, he, he used Latinx in a tweet, which, by the way, only like 3% of Latinos even use Latinx. 
So it's like kind of like a totally made up academic type thing that's put out there is like, these are the right words you have to use. He used it back then. This time he didn't. He said like Latinos. And so I don't know. This I, his commentary here is just sort of outdated, right? I don't see, you know who's talk who was talking about woke stuff all the time? Ron DeSantis. Republican politicians in the midterms. And then they lost. It wasn't Democrats talking about woke this, woke that. This is just like out of dated commentary. Hillary said Baskin of the Poor in 2016. We all criticized that. And you know what? She ended up losing. But, I don't know, Biden, Biden wasn't the one who said that. And I, I don't think Biden, I don't think the problem is Biden is too woke. Or Democrats right now are too woke. I think the problem is Democrats are helping to arm and fund a genocide in Gaza. That's one of the problems. The other problem is Biden cut off the pandemic era social safety net programs, which were expanded. Now that went away. So people are struggling at the bottom rung of the economic ladder. In other words, the thing he's making a big deal of is like the language policing and all that stuff. But like the real problem as it exists right now is arming and funding a genocide and people not feeling like the economy is working well for them. That's the problem. That's the problem. But see, that's the, okay. So for James Carville, here's the thing. Of course he's going to point to the language policing. Of course he's going to talk to, oh, hypersensitive type stuff. Because he is the embodiment of the actual main problem with the Democrats. Which is being wholly owned by multinational corporations and billionaires and donors and lobbyists. That's the real problem. That's the worst problem with the Democrats. And he wants to perpetuate that. Remember, this guy is incredibly hostile to Medicare for all. So he says he's against sneering liberal elites. You are the sneering liberal elite on the question of Medicare for all. We can never do that one. What about the insurance companies? Ha 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 That's the problem. That's the problem. The general attitude of not helping your constituents and your voters and helping your donors first. That's the problem. And he's the core of that problem. The Democratic strategist offered up a solution for Democrats trying to attract Trump voters in 2024. Quote, if you say, you dumb son of a bitch... How can you ever think that this fat, slimy, rapist, criminal racist should be president? They're going to recoil. He said, quote, I think Democrats should say, look, you believed in him. You felt like you weren't being seen. You were being culturally excluded, but he betrayed you. You thought he was going to be for you and helping you, but he was really for TikTok and tax cuts to the rich. I think that is the message they're more going with now, right? Like, do you have, do you have like, resistance liberal media types or hosts on MSNBC that fall more in the you're just an evil person if you support Trump camp. Sure. But as we talk about with Joe Biden, as we've been bringing up with Joe Biden, I think he is more making that latter argument. So his argument is, hey, don't look down your nose at, uh, at Republicans and conservatives. You want to peel off some of their votes. So be smart about peeling off some of their votes. I mean, that's true, right? But then the question is, what's the best strategy to peel off their votes? What's the best strategy? And I would argue part of that is harsh truths about Donald Trump. Bringing up the 91 criminal charges. Joe Biden should have a three-prong approach in order to defeating him. My opponent Trump is terrible, here's why. I'm awesome. Here are the things I've done. Chips Act, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. And here's what I'm going to do. Eliminate medical debt, whatever. Fill in the blank with whatever. That's a good policy. That's the strategy to be in. I don't know. It's, it seems to me like Carville's whole thing is he's stuck in a 2019 criticism, which, by the way, was a fair criticism. Yes, there was a time when it was way too goofy with the language and specific and chastising everybody who doesn't hop on board immediately and all that stuff. Yeah, there was a time that that was a bit a huge concern. But I just, under Biden, I don't really see it as that much of a concern right now. I don't think people are doing it as much as he thinks they're doing it. Like the hyper language policing stuff. And I mean, Biden just got in trouble because he said illegal immigrant, right? He said he called somebody an illegal at the State of the Union speech. And then he was like, they're not supposed to be here. They're illegal. And then after that, he had to say, oh, I meant undocumented immigrant. I meant undocumented immigrant. Like, he's certainly not the one doing the the tone policing. And to the extent it is happening, I don't know, it's less of a problem than he thinks it is. The big issue, again, is Democrats arming and funding a genocide 
That's pissing off a tremendous number of young people, a tremendous number of Muslim Americans and Arab Americans who otherwise would have voted for Biden and Democrats. You need to do whatever you can to stop the genocide, get these voters back on your side. And again, outside of that, materially improve people's lives with good policy on the economy. That's the way to win. Mix that with a nice hard-hitting campaign calling out the harsh truths about Trump, saying the good things we did and the good things we're going to do. That ends up when, I, I don't know, I just think his, I think he's got a little bit of an outdated analysis here. It's the thing we've been hearing for years and years and years of like, the main problem with Democrats is that they're all language policing 24-7, and that's all they're doing, and that's the problem, is they're elites. It's like, you say that as you're the guy who tries to block $15 minimum wage, tries to block the PRO Act and unionization, tries to block Medicare for All, tries to block the party moving left. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll meet him in a compromise here. Here's my, here's my position. My position is, I agree. Let's quit all the language policing. Let's quit all the hypersensitivity. Uh, that stuff's not helpful, never was helpful. So in terms of cultural affect, Democrats should appear moderate. Not scoldy, not finger waggy, not all any of that stuff. So cultural affect of moderation, welcomeness, all that. Totally agree. But you pair that with economic leftism. You pair that with the 2016 Bernie Sanders economic agenda. Would he agree to that compromise? No, he wouldn't. Because in his mind, he thinks, oh, the Medicare for all and the $15 minimum wage and the left-wing stuff on economics, that's actually liberal elitist nonsense too. Well, no, sorry, James. You are the liberal elitist, the sneering liberal elitist, certainly on those policies, that's for sure. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.